Okay, looks like we are actually in business, everybody. Welcome back, and I'm here with my guest because I already introed him, but I'm going to do it again because some of y'all probably didn't hear it. Uh, one more again. One more again. Live happens. So you all can <laughs> see the man himself is here with us, Mr. James Hicks from Hicks New Media. Uh, my, my friend, my brother, one of the shoulders I stand on to get this thing done. So I appreciate you, sir, and I appreciate your kindness and your patience with me as I wade through this night. So let's just do this and make sure the technology is correct. It should be streaming to your channel right now. It if is. it is, it we is. should be in I good shape. Yeah. Okay. And, and you awesome. know what? I, what, I, what I want to, after we're done, I want the whole blooper reel. So <laughs> I, I want the whole five or 10 minutes that, that we had prior to you being able to get it going right. I, I want that blooper reel because I'm, I'm going to put that out there somewhere. I'm just, I'm just saying. The blooper, the blooper reel. Yeah. Yes, we have a blooper reel, y'all. But as you can good. see, we have, and just to just make the, we're going to flow with this. It's not formal tonight. I'm going to encourage everybody who's in the building, ask your questions, especially if you are curious about this thing called artificial intelligence and how it can help you because the person who can answer your questions is right here with us tonight in studio so i'm excited about that we do have some folks in the building with us a couple of folks already chiming in saying good evening uh so we're going to say hello to them and we have uh frank is here with us and thank you frank for being in the building and moderating and we also have the emotional ceo here with us and you know, other people will be chiming in. They probably are wondering, where is she? Because she's always exactly at 630. <laughs> so good. I'll, I'll, I'll send out a couple of tweets saying that we're, that we're live as well so folks can come check out. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to start right off asking a question. And, and the question, the first question that I want to ask you is your broad brush assessment of how this world of artificial intelligence, which we know it's not new, how it's going to impact those who are serious leaders in terms of growing their business, growing their organizations um, from a productivity standpoint, from improving their work streams and, and workflows? Um, great question. Actually, great question and great uh, question that, that we can go a, a number of different directions in. Listen, artificial intelligence, as you said, is not new, but this generative AI piece is new, right? It, it is relatively a, a new piece, right? Just in terms of being able to feed a algorithm, a prompt, or pre a feed a system, a prompt, a bit of information and expect to get something out of that initial prompt, right? Multiple pieces of content, multiple pieces of information, whatever the case may be, kind of building blocks is, is a good way to put it. And I tell people a lot of time, you cannot be afraid of technology. You have to be able to leverage technology, utilize it and know how to, how to harness it for its essential good. Right there, there's pros and cons to everything out there in the world, professionally and personally. But from this generative generative AI perspective, especially for folks who are skilled workers, who are, I heard some graphic designers actually talking earlier. They, you know, talking about is generative AI going to take their jobs and take their roles away? No. Again, utilize these tools as utilize these frameworks and applications as tools, but uh, understand how you can harness them to improve on them get a framework, get a, get a foundation for the information that you're looking to disseminate to your community or to your customers and build on that. So make it your own, use it again, use it like the cliff notes when we were in high school, right? Just, you, you got a little bit of the information, but you still built on that to get the entire story and to get the entire, uh, uh output and the, the end result for folks. So don't be afraid of it, learn how to leverage it, understand and respect it as well, because you know, you, anything, could be used for evil, anything could be used for bad, anything can be used for negativity, but find the ways that you can actually take advantage of some of these tools and use them to the betterment of your end goal and your end result, your business, whatever the case may be. Awesome. So I want to hop right into some of the nitty gritty because people always want to know what tools. So hmm. if you have, uh, what, what are some of the tools in terms of productivity? And I'm thinking about it in terms of um, 
communication and collaboration first, because when you're in, in leading anything, you've got to do a lot of communicating and collaborating. So yeah. some, some systems out there that can be used and how can they be used to further our communication and collaboration? That's a loaded question too. And, and the reason I say that is because right now it's hot, right? There, there are new tools, new platforms, new utilities coming out weekly. And that, that's a good thing, right? Again, for the consumer, for the end user. But if you get caught up looking at the shiny object out there, then you'll never, you'll, you'll never settle down or you'll never, you'll never actually utilize something and get to learn the tools and processes that are within your toolkit. So again, and I say that, but I, I do have a handful that I, that I came out with. I, I really like to quantify and, and classify generative AI in, in some categories. So uh, creation, distribution, analytics, uh, automation, and productivity, and then from just note taking. To be honest with you, that, that that's a huge thing for me. So you know, note taking. I, I look at that as when I'm on a Zoom call or when I'm on a, a, a Google Meet or something of that nature. There are tools that will actually transcribe the entire conversation and actually capture that video and actually, after the session, generate a summary of the, of the meeting. So come up with actually bulleted action items from the conversation. So there, there are tools out there to do that. If you, if you want me to mention some names, there's like Fathom, F-A-T-H-O. I'll give you the links to all these tools that I'm missing as well, cause I'm coming off the dome with them, but okay. uh, Fathom. Okay, I haven't heard of Fathom. So that'll be an interesting yeah. one. It integrates with all of the, uh, again, the video conferencing system. So like a WebEx and the Zoom and, and the teams like that. So Fathom Tactic, T-A-C-T-I-Q. And uh, another one that I use is called Blocks. I'm going to give you three of each category. How about that? So Fathom, Tactic, and Blocks, B-L-O-K-S. And okay. Blocks is really what I use. It's a desktop app. It's a browser extension. And it's my personal assistant. It's my AI personal assistant that says, when I got a meeting, when I got something going on, it'll tell me what I have to do. I've got the reminder set 15 minutes at a time to know I'm on Florence's stream. Here's the URL to that stream. This is what you said you were going to talk about. And it, it kind of keeps me in line in terms of things that I got to do. So it's integrated with my calendar and things like that. So that's what I use for keeping track of notes, keeping track of my day to day activities as well. Okay, great. So we've got some folks in the, in, in the building who are heckling you, sir. Oh, I would, <laughs> I mean, you know what? I don't even have to look, but it's, it's you, probably some of the trifling. Well, oh, I'm sorry. But I, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. going to char. I'm going to char. I'm going to start with a, a gentleman who's who is brand new. I've never seen you in my stream before, and I want to say what? welcome, hey, Doctor Elo, Elo. But I have watched him. But yeah, Elo, bad man. Listen, Doctor Elo yes. is a bad man. Yes, he's a yes. he's a good man to have in the community. So I'm glad to have you, sir. Absolutely welcome. Please feel free to jump in. And this is the heckler in the building. We not we not answering no questions from from uh, from the peanut gallery. We, we not gonna deal with that. You know what I'm saying? So so he gonna... he does. So he really does have a question, and and, and it's no, all seriousness because so someone else may have this question: Is what's that tool to generate meeting content? You you just there's a number of them. Yeah. He's stuck on the tarmac. Tarmac yeah, in see, NYC. I, I, see, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with him because you know he's trying to get back home. So he's been, out, he's been out doing this thing at conference. He's out there conference season. So there's mm -hmm. a couple, Steve, that, that I use. Uh, I was mentioning Blocks, B L O K S, uh, but I also use a, a tool called Fellow.app. So Fellow.app generates my run of show. So Blocks okay. is what I use to to do my personal assistant type of. Again, these are the things that you got to do overall on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And, and go through that piece. When I do a stream, when I do a consulting session, I use fellow.app to actually generate the templates for my run of show, my topic, my bio. It's got all of that information already plugged in. And that's how I send out information to the folks that I'm going to be talking to. So that's probably the app that he's talking about because I've mentioned that to him in the past. Okay. So that that's an interesting one because it what I what I've talked about is when you with with folk is when you're planning anything, right? You have it in your calendar mm -hmm. and you put all your links in and all of that. This takes it to the next. It elevates that even further because yeah. it I mean, consolidates and again, that, that's, it. At the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do, right? If if you're pushing out a lot of content, if you're doing a lot of things, either from a professional, even from a personal perspective, you're looking for tools to help you manage that workflow. Mm -hmm. So 
the ones that I've mentioned thus far, the Fathom, the Block, Tactic Fellow, allow me to present it with some information, present it with my Google Calendar, present it with some templates for uh, what I want the runner show to look like for a perspective and focus or a team no sleeve or a digital collective. So I, I present kind of that framework. I give it that prompt and then it, it'll help me spit out what the conversation could look like. Again, I, I go in and I manipulate it myself, but it, it helps me get the conversation started by giving me uh, leading questions and mm -hmm. leading conversation pieces and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So I'm, I'm leveraging those tools to eliminate some of the, the time to, to do all, all of that information. Because again, when you're doing multiple sessions, you know, like, like you're doing as well and having guests on, Time really is, is critical. So if there's anything out there to help you with eliminating some of that administrative piece of doing the thing, find the one that works for you within your space mm -hmm. and take advantage of it. Yeah. And so I like that one. Uh, you know, we you talked about some other areas. So that's calendar management. Yeah, uh, calendaring and note-taking. Calendaring yeah. and note-taking, scheduling. Um, have you found... A, a one that would would bolt on to like a Calendly or any of those scheduling tools? Would there would there be any benefit to adding? Calendly Cause it's, integrates with a, with a ton of systems. And what mm -hmm. Calendly in, in, integrates with, I can't even speak right now. It must be Friday afternoon. I'm not even drinking. This is coffee. Um, are uh, Zapier, mm -hmm. Padly, and uh, if this, then that are, are some, some critical ones that I, that I use all the time. And those will integrate into a lot of systems as well. So mm -hmm. you know, Calendly is, is how I set up my four types of sessions that people can book me for, either a meeting, live stream, uh, consult, or an office hour. And Calendly will, again, generate the time, find the free busy time on, on both of our sides, and then it'll send out a handful of questions, send me your bio, send me your... Uh, headshot, send me some questions, think, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Then I'll feed that into my CRM that has integrations from Calendly to, to Zapier to Moxie, which is the CRM that I use for one of the CRMs that I use for keeping track of all of my information. So mm -hmm. yeah, Calendly is, is really, there's, there's a number of them out there, right? There's so many tools out there to do the exact same thing, but Calendly really is slightly above the curve just in terms of integration, right? You, mm -hmm. you can actually book someone through their browser plugin on in LinkedIn, you can mm -hmm. book someone through their browser plugin or, or through the, the mobile app as well. So again, efficiencies in terms of being able to do things quickly, not saying it's the best, I'm mm -hmm. saying it's pretty good, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that what it does and for me in terms of workflow management, in terms of efficiency, in terms of being able to iterate quickly and easily, Calendly from, from a calendar perspective does that and, and feeds into a lot of those other systems and other tools. So you, you, you mentioned some of the things, you, you know, Hicks New Media has been around. Yeah. The business has been there for 10 plus years. What, from your standpoint, what are the things you, you have implemented, such as Flow.app, uh, to help you run the business in generative AI? Because, and, and I'd like to have you have more, a little bit depth, uh, conversation around what that actually means for those who may not really understand because artificial intelligence is one thing generative AI is something else yeah conversational AI is yet something else so if you could before we get into how you you've managed to change some of the things that you've done in business delve a little bit and help our 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 community understand what are the differences between those you touched on gen, uh, just the two, first two but then you go to the next level to conversational ai well my my thought about this is and again i try to be very high level very thirty five thousand foot level so everyone in the community can understand it so again artificial intelligence was the, was the aspect of having robots machines automation do tasks Right. Think assembly line, think manufacturing, think uh, uh, being able to solve a problem instead of having a human ha try to solve that problem all the time, have an algorithm, have a robot, ha have technology solve that particular problem. Generative AI is and, and I actually lump those two together, com conversation versus generative. So generative AI is really feeding a prompt to a system. 
that you can then turn into multiple bits of information, right? You, you feed it, I want to create X, Y, and Z. Generative, you feed that into a generative AI algorithm and it gives you multiple options in terms of what that could look like for the case and for the prompt that you submitted to. Now, from a conversational piece, using artificial intelligence in the realm of business owners, solopreneurs, content creators, especially, I really start leaning towards and thinking about micro content and being able to take something like this, take a long form piece of content and finding the right clips within it, finding, finding the, the, the key messages, finding the hooks, finding the, the conversation aspects that will actually garner retention using that piece of it, the artificial intelligence algorithm and saying, grab that five minutes when James was actually talking and it was making some sense and let's cut that up and let's, let's give you the formats that you need to send that to every, every location that you use. So the, the LinkedIn's of the world, the YouTube's of the world, wherever the case may be, right? And, and even taking that video and converting it into text. So generative AI, conversational AI is again, taking a prompt for, for me and in, in, in my definition that I tell people on the elevator, right? It's taking a prompt being and then being able to spit out of that multiple bits of information that resonate with that foundational uh, question that you asked of the system. Awesome. So, you know, you, you said that and you're talking about prompt and it, it leads me to this next point of conversation. So everyone, if you didn't understand, this is not a scripted deal. We're just having a conversation here. <laughs> and your heckler is still heckling, sir. You know what? I, I hope <laughs> that the... Now, I'm not going to wish no, no bad, no bad. You know, the man is trying to get home. He, he's, sitting, he's sitting in a 747. I'm not going to wish him anything. I'm just going to say I hope the food <laughs> and is uh, cold and that the coffee is cold. not available on the paint. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, when you talk about uh, using using uh, generative AI, conversational AI, then that, then to me, naturally, it means we've got to train maybe you agree or disagree or see it differently train ourselves to think differently in terms of what questions are we asking have you I, I, seen hmm. or encountered working with folks that they're really starting to from a productivity standpoint and from a workflow standpoint lean into really being clear about what questions and how am i asking these questions that's a, because that's the a output great question. you get it's all yeah. about that right yeah, I just I just don't think folks understand what questions to ask, or, or or very hesitant and, and and timid about the questions to ask a system to generate an output. We we almost know what we want out of it, but how to ask a system, right? How to actually frame the question? Do we do we talk like we talk normally? Do we use slang? Do we use abbreviations? What whatever? How do we feed the information into a system to to spit out eventually what we want? Like think about generative AI from the perspective of art. And images. I want a picture of Florence in the on the beach with a drink in her hand. Right? How, how do you word that to a system? You, you know what you want to come out, but how do you, how do you word that into the environment? These systems are getting smarter monthly. Right? We started with ChatGP3, built off of GP3.3, and now we've got GPT4. We've got Perplexity AI. We've got Elon just announcing that he's come out with X.AI. So new organizations, new companies focused on bridging that gap between self-learning technology and self-aware uh, technology. Uh, that that bridge is actually getting getting shorter in terms mm -hmm. of crossing. Um, you think GPT3? only knows up to, I think, 2020 or 2021 21. and GPT-4, right? I mean, so, I mean, you ask it a question, it, it, it doesn't know what happened uh, a couple of years ago. You you upgrade your subscription, you go to GPT-4, then you start getting a little bit more current types of information as opposed to historical data. So so again, in the, in the evolution of time, since we've been talking about generative AI, since it's been on CNN, since it's been on C CBS, I'm pointing back at this t TV here, right? Since it's uh -huh. been commercialized, um, it's been very much of a, of a hockey stick type of uh, progression and learning, right? You can teach a computer to learn something much faster than you, than you can teach an individual. So the fact that there are so many organizations, individuals, 
teams that are out there working on this particular opportunity, I can call it a problem or I can call it a challenge, but this particular opportunity, uh, that's a good thing. How do we leverage that as end consumers? How do we leverage that as business owners, as content creators, as individuals? That's still being flushed out. And, and I would, anyone who tells you they know the answer is is lying, right? We, we are all working it out and trying to figure it out on a daily basis because there is so much happening within this particular space. And then when you start looking at it again from a professional side and from a personal side, what are those prompts that you're using? So uh, I, I will use my tools and I will feed information and I will do a different ask of ChatGPT versus Perplexity AI versus BARD, uh, the Google platform or something of like that, just to see you know, what the different scenario is that comes out when I give it that particular prompt. Right, exactly. And that, <laughs> you, we have folks we did get a positive comment, so I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage that. And 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 so, uh, let me look at these comments. Well, Hold I'm gonna on, I, you got a question, so I want to make sure we answer questions. And Dr. Lee Elo says, "What was the name of the IVA blocks?" Uh, and and I, you gave it, and uh, but that was his question. So what was that name? He's looking for that again. Oh, block block B L O K S. B L O K S dot A P dot I O or dot app. Do you know? Blocks dot app. All right, I just Elo. dropped it. I just dropped it in chat. <laughs> Elo, Elo, you know what he doing? He he got me over here working too. And okay, so let's, let's, the, let's the do man this, stuck brother. on there the, you go. the the man stuck. Oh, oh gee, the man stuck uh -oh. on the tar tarmac has a comment about the question. The more you know what you want from a out from an output, the better the question, the better the output. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, you know that the, the, that has always been the case, right? Yeah, pr pretty much. I mean, it. it so again, there, there's nothing new. You just you, you know what you want from uh, from the end result. You just have to know how to feed it into the system. You have to know how to program into the system. So the the more quality of a question, the more thorough of a question that you can ask these particular algorithms in these particular environments, the better result that you're going to be. And and you're right. I mean, in everything that we do. That's the the same scenario in the same same situation. So, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I try to bring up, you know, my my. Uh, I try to be fancy, do my little ecam thing, but my but you, I, I, I won't do that again. Oh, see now you got me on full screen. Okay, now now I can do it. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on. <laughs> so there, there, you, you, go. there you go. There you go, Elo. All right, brother. Blocks the AI powered productivity assistant. That's the one that I that I use right there. B l o k s dot app. Yeah. Yeah, that be become he, the productivity goat, man. I, listen, I, oh. I normally charge for this information, man. So you, listen, well, El Elo, he, he, he gets by. He, he did all right for me not too long ago. He's all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that. There Treat should be right. something in the Treat mailbox right. in, in a couple of days. There should be there actually be something for him in the mailbox in a couple of days. So. Mm hmm. So another question that we did get as well, and I'm going to adjust my my. Uh, thing here is Steve is do, doing too much. He's doing too much. There it is right there. Lord not, have mercy. I'm going to use that not as a Not five minutes, right more there. like two minutes. He's just, he's, he's doing the most. We do have some move folks. I want to make sure I say hello to this gentleman. Dagan, so glad to have you here with us tonight and uh, enjoy. Please make sure you ask your questions. And of course, we have none other than the man who seems like he's everywhere. Tech troublemaker. See him all over the place. Yeah, out there doing doing as well. All over the place. And uh, Doctor Elo is getting a laugh out of us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see the blooper reel. Man, that's, that's, we got some hilarious that content here for you. Man. Was I was hilarious. Recording. Flo didn't know I was recording on my end, so I, I, I got her. <laughs> she she dropped a few few words that listen. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say nothing, but I'm just gonna say, yeah. She said some things. But... I, I I was. <laughs> oof, I was like, what in the world is happening mm -hmm. here? It's all so good. Uh, let's just move on. You know, you talked about it. Yeah. You see, I'm all out of all wacky looking here. So uh, back to the. That was because of bloopers. I didn't get to make all the adjustments. Uh, you talked about you know your personal assistant, your calendar, yeah. managing that content. You talked about uh, using blocks for uh, gathering 
content when you're in meetings. What about uh, note taking? Because this is a huge one. Note taking. You know, every note taking app that we can come up with pretty much has said we've now got AI. But yeah. what does that really look like? And how do this not, not only what does it look like, but how do you figure out what capability it's important to you? Because what's important to, yeah, to, to different people, it's not it's not always the same. Yeah. And, and try not to boil the ocean, folks, either. Right. Because, again, again, try not to do more than you really probably need to be doing within the short and the midterm. Right. A lot, a lot of times folks will buy uh, extensive packages of software or hardware, whatever the case may be. Mr. Worthy knows the term gas, right? We, we talk about that a lot, gear acquisition. A lot of times we'll, we'll get in before we're even ready to be at a particular level. So, uh, and, and I say a lot of that because some of the tools that I've already mentioned have multiple uh, capabilities. So something like a fellow.app allows me to do note-taking, but I also uh, have leveraged Notion. I've leveraged uh, uh, ClickUp. I've actually moved from Notion back to ClickUp uh, some folks are probably not going to like that. I, I, I know my man Worthy is a, is, a, is a big Notion guy, but I've moved back to ClickUp just because, again, ease of use and from a consolidation of capabilities. ClickUp has a built-in uh, time tracking module. It has a built-in screen sharing module. It has built-in capabilities to integrate with your Google Calendar and things like that. So, again, I can do a whole lot of different things with just this one tool as opposed to just having... Um, lists of information and documentation and things of that nature. So from a note-taking perspective, I would say Notion, ClickUp, Fellow, and uh, what else did I use before? Those are really the ones that, I, that I've been using for, for that particular purpose. Again, not, not trying to, and as new products come out, I'm looking at them and I'm evaluating them because again, as a subject matter expert, as a technical advisor, I need to know about them and I will make the right recommendation to folks depending on their need. But for me, I always have at least three in my arsenal that I, I stay up to date on so I can continue to leverage, leverage those skills and build those skills. So Notion, ClickUp, and, uh, and Fellow from, from a note-taking perspective. So I'm going to be a little bit nosy because you just piqued my interest when you said you, it sounded like at one point you were using ClickUp, you moved from ClickUp to Notion, and now you've moved from Notion back to ClickUp. I go, listen, I go back and forth. I go, well. <laughs> so did you, did you actually... So this is an interesting question. Yeah. Did you use any of the uh, any of the AI tools to actually move the your data from out of Notion back into ClickUp? You can export it out. You can export okay. data out. Yeah. So I, I didn't okay. have to rewrite. <laughs> I didn't have to rewrite okay. everything like like back in the day when I was using mm -hmm. uh, Evernote. Oh my gosh! I probably just dated myself with that one. Everyone I was still dope, use right? I, and it's. Let me just say this because I was advised. I this is not sponsored by any of these people. Nobody yeah. asks us to say anything, but I actually still use Evernote, and I've tr tried Obsidian, it's just so expensive. Rome, uh, Notion, uh, yeah. any number, and I keep my brain is so wired to to Evernote, and I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to get yeah. my brain unwired from Evernote because I can get all my data out. That's not an issue. Right. But, but, I but just, think about it again. Why right, yeah. move if you don't have to move? And why move if it's, if what you're using is serving the purpose? Which is, again, mm -hmm. why I typically will recommend at least three to people that I'm talking to. But for like my use case, I've, I've decided to click up because of some of that. Those productivity integrations make sense for me as I'm mobile, as I'm on the move and things of that nature, being able to be quick. But if Evernote is fulfilling the need for you, and again, I'll say short term and midterm, you'll get to the long term eventually. You, you'll, you'll get there. Once you reach over a particular part of your journey, then, then you'll know when it's time to maybe move over. But for the short and the midterm, if Evernote is meeting the need that you've got, use it. Don't don't try again. Don't follow that shiny object that, mm -hmm. that uh, is always coming out with, with, with something new every single day, every single week, every single month. But uh, you, use what you use and especially if you're good at it. Yeah, and, and and I'm <clears throat> I would count myself not I'm not patting myself on the back or sticking my chest don't out. Don't hit. No, no, uh, don't but be, I'm don't I'm, be a, I'm a I'm I'm an Evernote power user because I I coach people in using it. I train people how to use it because I've used it from since 2008, and yeah. uh, I've learned how to build whole infrastructures 
with templates and mm -hmm. and now some of the integration that's in there, you're right. They've just raised their prices again. Um, yeah. But for the value that I'm getting, I, I don't have other tools. So I'm not investing in other tools, though that investment is going into this one tool. There you go. So, there you go. Um, that, you so would we become do, an expert and then, then teach folks how to use it and, and charge them. <laughs> I do charge them. <laughs> they, right. Okay. I, I do. I just, I do charge them. <laughs> there you go. I will be glad to help you. Hey, man, look Here's at a, little, a little, link to little, schedule little. A, uh, some appointments or I can put you in a program. I ain't mad at that. Go ahead. On. Uh, so we have a question here from Mr. Worthy says, what are your thoughts about mind maps? He loves them. Oh, listen, mind maps are the truth, too. I, I love mind maps, and I've um, I've used Lucidchart. Lucidchart was the the app that I use a, a lot when I, mm -hmm. again, want to come come up with something. Lucidchart and Miro. Mm -hmm. uh, Miro, I, I, I've used Miro before, but Lucidchart really, again, allows so for folks who don't understand or don't know what mind maps are, you, can, you have a concept, you have a starting point, and then you start plugging in all of the interrelationships of that particular concept or end goal and to have it i'm a graphical person and as you see i talk with my hands as well so i'm a very that that, that kind of person so being able to see things graphically written down and, and in a space as opposed to just having it in your mind uh, that really that really helps that that finds different avenues that finds different um circumstances that you probably didn't think of if you would if you're just working by yourself but if you're collaborating having that central goal and then having all those interrelated pieces and then seeing how they in interact with each other and mm -hmm. then feeding them into something that will show what a critical path is right what, what's it going to take to get from this point to that point oh well these all things have to work together and you can do that visually with the mind map and uh, like i say lucid chart was one that i used uh, a lot so we have a have a person talking about Apple Notes are great. This is my favorite app for quick thoughts and ideas. Apple Hashtag Notes creative whiteboard. Listen, Apple Notes is so simple. It it's so simple yet so powerful. Mm -hmm. And again, eighty percent of the planet. I don't want even. I don't know if I'll say it that. Well, seventy percent of the planet has an iPhone. Mm -hmm. It's an app that comes on the phone. It's and you don't pay for it. Right, and right? you can do collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can you can, can collaborate. You, you, you can, can collaborate. You can do markup. You can markup, meaning you know you can draw and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, Apple Notes is really cool. That's what I started with when I was just uh, coming up with content creation ideas as well. So again, just being somewhere and, and really quickly firing up Apple Notes, writing them down. But now I use uh, uh, a couple of other tools. So like I said, uh, Clip, ClickUp is where locking in all that information for me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> tech troublemaker. My mind map would be control chaos at best. My thoughts aren't that linear. <laughs> he is something. One day he's going to get it together. He keeps saying get, one day he's, he's going to get he's, focused. The, there you go. Right I'm there. Saying, but... Right there. That's all you're saying. So speaking of that, since he, he brought that up, uh, all this planning that you do, and all yeah. these tools that you have, what are your your thoughts in, about really truly doing exactly what we said, focusing down and getting your thoughts down someplace that requires you to think through what you want to do, how you're going to do it, before you start using all the shiny applications and hardware and equipment out there? I love the product placement there too. I'm um, yeah, you definitely gonna need to send me the raw files of this because that that little that little product placement right there. You're not gonna just gloss over that. You know, Florida, Florida got got the book in her hand. You know, shout out to. <laughs> um, Look, the I'm, pages I'm a, are turning up and everything. I, I love it. I I love it. I, I'm a huge proponent that uh, if you don't write it down. It's it's not really a goal, right? It's just a plan. If it's just in your head, it's just a plan until you write it down. Then it becomes a goal, right? So mm -hmm. I've got a whiteboard over here on this side of my wall right here that has a vision, my vision board. I've got multiple copies of of my planner as well that are that are full a, as well. And I will write down the next day's activities before I shut down for the evening and make mm -hmm. sure I get those top three things knocked out. 
-hmm. Steve uh, Worthy is a, a Pomodoro a person. Pomodoro. Mm -hmm. Right, 15 minute work. I'm a eat the frog kind of person. So different getting things done type of mentalities, right? Mm -hmm. I might find those top three things, those hard three things, and get those knocked out early in the day. You'll, you'll do the Pomodoro. They all work, but again, if it, if you don't write it down, if you don't actually execute on it, find a way to execute on it, put some put some effort into actually addressing that situation, then you just plan it. Then you forget mm -hmm. about it. You mm -hmm. write it down, it becomes the goal. Right. And, and then you can measure it. Then you can say, I said I was going to do X, Y, and Z. I only did A and B. Oh, man, I, I got I to gotta get it together. I, I got to get this stuff done. So I really like the, the concept and the, the mindset of taking ownership for what you say you're going to do and actually mm -hmm. getting it done. Right. Yeah. And that, that doesn't require any kind of special application. No. A old fashioned pen and paper. That's it. It's very, I mean, it, it's just that simple. And it, it Write sounds. Write it down. Markers, little dry erase markers. I, I got more dry erase markers. But, but again, because again, that's when you, when you have the skin in the game, right? And when you actually have some, some, some energy put into it as well. Because we can all sit around Monday morning quarterback, pontificate about we can make the world better. We can do all the things. But until you put some action into it, until you put the shoes on, until you actually put that, that come on now, we, we about to go, go to church, but until you actually put some effort and some energy into the activity that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. hey, you, you're, just, you're just talking, you're just making noise. Let's rise above the noise and have a plan for execution and a plan for action. Yeah. So folks are commenting out here, James. They, they got uh -oh. comments. They got comments. I, I bet they do. Who, who got the comments, man? They, they got comments out here. I'm going to try jokes. to get... They, I'm going to try to get to the... Oh, that's even worse. Y'all, I'm going to get it together. I'm having a time today. But Robert said... <laughs> I like this. At first, when I heard Pomodoro, I thought people were seeing pomegranate and wondered why <laughs> folks were enjoying food. I, I, I love it. Good to see you, Robert. Oh. <sighs> Oh my goodness. That's oh funny, my though. goodness. Oh yeah, my goodness. And yeah, that, uh, that was funny. That that was funny. And Roy said he started his LLC this week. Come on. So man. he's working on getting focused. He's been talking about that. So he's taken the action to uh to move one step closer. Awesome. And uh, and so Frank said is already telling him what his win of the week is. Yeah. That, what his that's win huge. of the week is what it would it really is huge you know you were you were sharing some of the other categories that you yeah. you were looking for tools in uh what are two or three of the other categories that folk would do well to consider employing and and, and i when i when i wrote these down again i was looking at entrepreneurs solopreneurs and folks within the content creation ecosystem mm -hmm. some of them will resonate with, with other industries as well but so like, like I said, uh, analytics, I use vid, vid IQ when you plug that into, I, I know two buddies out there and two buddies is good too. And so I don't, I don't want to say nothing bad about them because I, just in case they want to do some brand deals, but you know, shouts out to two buddy, but vid IQ has done some things recently that really is leveraging the power of generative AI and coaching and so generative AI plus real life coaching, meaning that. They will analyze your channel. They will analyze your niche. They will analyze what you want to say to your community and actually give you recommendations for prompts, titles, descriptions, content, the whole script as well, based on the information, again, based on that prompt that you feed it. So the, the higher quality the prompt is that you feed that particular environment, the better the end result. VidIQ has done a fantastic job of doing that. And what I really liked about them that stands above, even outside of that, that stands above TubeBuddy is their mobile app. The mobile app for, for TubeBuddy isn't that great. The mobile app for VidIQ is, is incredible. Because again, I can be very efficient regardless of where I am, have an idea come into the head, type that into VidIQ, say, I want to make a video about this. It'll give me questions to ask it'll give me uh, a generic thumbnail that i could probably use at the beginning until i customize my other one but it, it gets me that framework to get me going to where i eventually want to go so so i love vidIQ from an analytics perspective again for content creators okay. uh, another one was uh 
around just creation in and of itself. A lot of folks are using Canva. Canva's okay, right? Canva's okay. Cam Canva's very straightforward, very easy to use. A lot of functionality built into that. So either mm -hmm. use that, use something like, um, eh, what, what, what was the other one? Easel? You know, Ado Adobe there? Express is beta, so that, that's has the beta for their, uh, for their product, for, for yeah, uh, so, so the So that's beta. where I was going to go. Right, so so no no canvas out there, no easels out there, no all those other platforms are out there, but spend some time learning and understanding the Adobe Suite. That is transferable to not just the content creation ecosystem and world, but also to graphic design to to a lot of other ecosystems as well, because they utilize Adobe. So no, it's not just Acrobat. Know your Photoshop. Know your Lightroom. Know your Premiere. No one, you know, Premiere is a little bit more challenging than Final Cut Pro, but Adobe really is that de facto platform for graphic design, content creation. Get a understanding, at least, of the, the tool set out there. Um, what else is out there? Look the who script. snuck in. Oh, well, <laughs> the man with multiple channels going. The man with multiple <laughs> channels. Good evening, Mr. Strong. Welcome to the show. You snuck yeah. in there. Well, Sorry. he snuck in with his, with, with his other channel. That's what. What is, is. What is new he, channel? He, what is new name? That's all good. Yeah. So, and then he said he likes what Canva's doing. So, so again, Canva's doing some great things, but don't rest on the laurels of just learning one particular platform. Find find a way to understand something like a Affinity Designer or something like a uh, anything within the Adobe Suite. Get those skills within your tool belt as well, just in case something like a one of these other ones falls off. Adobe's not going anywhere. So there, there's that. I, I mentioned about Descript. Uh, again, from a, a content creation perspective, catch all to do a lot of things, transcribing, uh, micro content, distribution and things like that. Um, Headliner is another one that I utilize as well for cutting up long form video, turning in, into short form video, making audiograms and things like that. And actually, I use Headliner to automatically pull my long form videos, grab the audio, and then republish that to the pay playlist on my YouTube channel as an audio podcast. That's how you get that audio podcast out yeah. so fast. Yeah. So Headliner does all of that behind the scenes. As soon as I'm done filming a piece of content, a video, Headliner has the feed, the RSS feed for my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It transcribes it, sends it up to the, to the uh, playlist and then distributes that out as well. Again, efficiencies of scale, mm -hmm. utilizing these tools that actually help uh, decrease the amount of time, energy, and effort to get content out to the community. Okay. So I, I uh, there are a lot of content creators here. One of, my, one of my beliefs is we sometimes can overlook how much people really do create content just naturally in their life mm. as mm -hmm. they're moving along. So the comment that I want to make, and I'm going to, if you, if you need a break, I can put you in the green room for a minute to give you a break. But the, the comment that I, I want to make is to remind the community, the audience, the folks who are watching and including, uh, those who are part of the replay crew, you are a creator. If you're doing anything to communicate with other people, to get a message out, these tools will be applicable. You don't have to have, although it's wonderful to do, you don't have to be doing video content on YouTube or LinkedIn or any of them. You may be doing just one. You may be like Mr. Hicks, started out writing and you may not be publishing it the way he is, but you're doing it in the context of leading your nonprofit or any, in your profession somewhere. These tools are still applicable. Am I wrong, James? You're actually, you, you're 100 percent correct. And I, I know we, we've kind of gone all over the place, but again, there, there's rationale and there's reason behind that because mm -hmm. we can't really narrow it down until we hear specific, we being, being advisors, coaches, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to put on, on the business card until we hear what your specific use case is. So mm -hmm. I, I just gave, I don't know, 10 or 12 specific tools that I utilize, use and test or, or whatever the case may be. But until I hear what 
Roy's particular situation is, until I hear what uh, Steve's particular situation is, then we can narrow down kind of the playing field and say, this works for you, right? You, you want you want a tool that will help you with your descriptions and your titles and, and your blog content. All right, check out Word Hero, check out Otter, check out, Jack, right? check out some of these particular tools and see which one meets your particular use case. I can give you those recommendations, but... Uh, well, it, I it, mean, just, it's, it's all it's always evolving. It's, all, it's always growing. But that's that's the exciting part for us as well, though, to be able to have these conversations. Literally, if we had this conversation next week, I'd give you 10 or 12 different. Yeah. Platform. So uh, Walter Strong asked a question here uh, about whether Adobe Express can be purchased on a monthly or annual subscription. The thing yes. that I will tell yes, it can. But I also want to encourage if you want to try it and get a feel for it. Try the free version. The beta is still free right now, yeah. where they put yeah. the AI in and some other capabilities. So you can either use the, the the version that is gold right now, it's GA, or you can use the beta or switch back and forth between it just to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Before I mean, you you know while you're making a decision, that that's my would be my advice, especially if you've got something you're using already. Yeah, I mean. And keep in mind, if you do that, the beta does is not interoperable. It's not uh, backwards compatible right now to right. the current version. So if you like fired up the the GA version right now and tried to switch over to the beta, that old that content would not be it's not transferable just yet. They they just they haven't crossed the path yet. They they haven't crossed the code uh, on on those two two sides of the uh, of the platform just yet. So. Start with the beta, to be honest with you, because that's where that's where they're going. Where they're going. So learn, yeah, right. learn, learn how to use the, that generative AI piece. Learn how to use that text-to-image piece that they have out there. I think mm -hmm. there were some other things as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Adobe is the truth, man. You definitely need to at least have an understanding of what Adobe is doing from a, con from a digital creator perspective, if that's what your particular industry mm -hmm. is. And we have a new, new viewer here. Um, new, new. New, new. He's never been to the show before, so welcome, Sammy Superstar. I, of course, I've seen oh. you all over everywhere. What? And I know you never you had know Sammy James. on. I've Sammy, never listen. had. I've never had Sammy on, but I've well, I've winning. watched him on a lot of things, and of course, see him in in the conversations quite often. Listen, you quite, winning quite when you got Sammy on. Listen, yeah. I tell you what. So it, okay. it looks like we've got some folks who's a little bit familiar with the Adobe uh, Express and and. Uh, products and so they're encouraging uh others to uh participate and robert has a comment here about headlines so it's something that he's used mm. uh oh he's talking about making templates oh i could go down a whole rabbit hole on making templates yeah. we could be here I mean, another two hours talking about the value of using templates again time saving types of uh increasing efficiency in our workflow. I, I just was talking with Neil Mahdi two days ago, CEO at, at Headliner about some things that they've got coming out. So they're, they're, they're solid in audio, obviously, right? They're solid in podcasts, but they're really looking at bridging some of the gaps between what they do for video. And I, I know we're probably running up on time, but I did want to at least talk about that other category of distribution. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the, the category of distribution, Y'all, some of y'all know that I will cut up a, a long form piece of content into micro content in a minute. Well, in a short period of time, because I, mm -hmm. I got some tools and y'all know I love me some Opus Opus Pro. Mm -hmm. Opus Pro. So o Opus Pro, I literally have had the CEO, CMO and CTO in this room back back yes. in November. So mm -hmm. I, I just saying that we, we, we go back and I advocate for them. Right. I, I advocate for people that are doing good things and they are on a, on the right track. So I really like what they're doing. So, again, cutting up long form content, being able to distribute that out to multiple social media platforms. Opus Pro right. is, is is incredible. Uh, there's another one that I have just bought into. I literally just bought into it last night. Wow. It's called Momento. It's called Momento. Okay. So Momento is um, similar. But again, I like to have I like to have three. So this is my second one. But Momento has um, some varying captions capabilities, has some varying template capabilities, kind of kind of like you were just mentioning, and also has some of that other integration of being able to do similar to these other AI tools or come up with description 
come up with titles, come up with uh, blog content, th things of that nature. So it's, it's doing some more of that integration as opposed to just pushing out information. It's allowing you to create information uh, internally to the platform as well. So Momento was that. And then the third one that I'll mention, I'll mention four, uh, Captions. The Captions app, it's only, it's only iOS right now, but Captions is, again, I'm sitting there with my iPhone, I'm recording either right to it or I'm inputting information into it. You can do the uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool captions. You can do music, you can do jump cuts. You, you can do a lot of things right through on your mobile phone and then push that out to your social media platforms. So Captions is the third. And then video.ai, V-I-D-Y-O. That AI. That's that's a similar platform to Opus and Momento. Okay. Well, we have an, an another. So you you know I'm I got just, the listen, big giving, I got I'm the get, big I'm guns. Dropping. You you drop some say, stuff, but we got uh, uh, Gretchen, I've, who I've seen. Of course, she's part of the ecam oh, fam, I love her. and she said thanks. She was wondering why she didn't see her content in AE beta. Yeah, that I yeah, that was confusing to me too when I when I tried it and I don't do a whole lot of design of anything because I'm not very good at it. I'm learning. As I say, I'm in the learning journey. But uh the little bit that I have been practicing when I went over there I was like, Where's all my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, Gretchen. Glad we were able to uh, get that answer to you so that you're no it's longer confused. Cool yeah. So, you know, I, I'm going to just drop this little thing because you, you talked about, you know, we, we both are Ecamm users. Yes. And Ecamm even has started to put some artificial intelligence into its product, just helping you come up with titles for your videos. But here's what I want you to talk about. When you have a tool like this, Ecamm, and it'll mm. allow you to do something like, hey, I want to get a good title. Do you have to be using that, that information for a video <laughs> or can you use it for something else? Use it as a framework. Use it as a foundation. Use it as a, a jumping off point, right? Don't, don't do the John ja Morant. And feed your apology to the NBA into so that, I said that specifically for for <laughs> for, for Walter Strong, right? Don't don't do the John Morant thing. Feed your apology into Chat GPT and then copy and paste that verbatim and try to submit that. We can see through that. We can, we can see through the very shallow um, layers of that. So again, feed the prompt some information, let it spit out some information, but then put your personality into it. Put your informational, amusing, informal, uh, happy, wh whatever the, your tone around the information is, especially when it comes to titles and descriptions. You, you really need to be very personal in that. And a lot of us who live in our analytics and look at how our platforms are maturing, things of that nature, know that thumbnails, titles, descriptions, things like that are really key in terms of capturing attention of folks so if you, if you if you look like you're a robot you're a robot but if you if you, you put in that james hicks into it then you, you will have a little bit of extra extra flavor to it so just use it as a framework use it as a foundation and use it as as a, again that jumping off point so you got some uh oh uh oh james uh -oh. you got a product you got a product you uh, got a product right here listen that hey, needs to be I'll, a t-shirt she, she's I'll talking your tonight. language I'll, Hey, Keith, Keith Pelzer's had a statement last week on Conscious Conversations. I spent out the canvas last night. So we, we got canvases with what I'll, I'll make that. What, what is it? <laughs> framework Foundation. Jump on. Yeah. Framework Foundation. Jump off point. Yes. Give me that four is hours. what she put that. Yeah. That's what she. You know what? That, hey, this yeah, is what me, you do. This It'll is what you do. I, and, and, and to that end, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to say, if you have not, okay, now I, there it comes, because I didn't load it up. If you have not, and you don't, and I got him on here twice instead of me in here, let me oh, fix that. I, I can just I can just wait this for Steve Worthy to be saying something right now. We don't Steve need to Worthy. see two of them. <laughs> <laughs> we got two of them up there. Oh, Lord, now we got three of them. I, we got I, three I of them. We got three of Lord them. Flor me. Florence is trying to fix it. Live, y'all, live happens, and I'm not even gonna run from it. I'm just gonna tell you the truth and just let it be. Let, let it, be. it be. Let it Lord be. Lord have mercy. There's three of them. So, uh, if you mm -hmm. have not, 
Uh, this is Mr. Hicks's website, uh, Hicks New Media. Oh, so I got I got to redo. Look at that, that that old background with the the hex cubes and the, oh my goodness! I, I'm, I'm not saying the, anything, but uh, white balance you was can all? go to okay. this. You can go to his website here. You can talk about whatever you want, sir, because this is this is your product. This is your 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 property, as we say, yes. where you own uh, what. But what people can find there that can be of use to them. Yeah, listen. So. Uh, own your digital real estate, right? Don't, don't, don't be on rented ground. Don't be on just Facebook. Don't be just on Instagram, just on Discord, wh wherever. Own your name, own your property to where you can help control the, the dialogue and control the, uh, the conversation. HicksNewMedia.com is the home for all things me. Uh, I also have JamesHicks.link, which is a much more... Uh, easily accessible from any location, especially from from mobile. And James Hicks link has uh, integrations and connectivity into my booking, into my merch, into my YouTube, into all, all the things, so to speak. Right. So, um, yeah, go, go there, check it out, see see what we're doing. Uh, always doing something. I'm, I'm literally revamping the entire website as we speak. I I, I still have WordPress in the blood, so I, I'm I'm in there cowboy coding. And, and, and changing things as we speak. But yeah, own, own your digital real estate, folks. That That is something that you really, really need to be doing. Floda, muted herself one more again. She did mute herself, but I was just saying, you got somebody heading over to uh, jameshicks.live right now. Uh, okay, so that, <laughs> so, so I own so many domain names that takes you to my youtube page so james takes that live yeah takes you to but it's that uh, my link. youtube page. it's that link yeah, that you just said yeah yeah and james takes that link l-i-n-k yeah we got somebody else in the building with us here enda thank you for joining us tonight glad to have you here and this from uh he he from across the water so oh, i wow. think it's like 2 a.m. his time i don't know Woo. but yeah appreciate you from brother for being here you he, know he what like Alec, some right? people need to he, stop he in the future he in the future you see what they're doing to me? They doing that to you. I mean, right? Nothing. That's what they're doing to me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe y'all. That's okay. Hashtag mute nation. You still getting a point because you hearing Mr. Hicks. You need to hear him, not me. Just saying. Be very clear. So I have really peppered you a lot. I I this can keep cool. going. This is a cool little conversation, is, this, though. This, I, this I normally cool... don't get to just just chill. Just and chill just and not be, but know? tell people what yeah. they need to know and think no. about as you're developing your environment and you're you're making moves you're you're changing you're growing you're growing yourself personally but you're also growing your organization whatever size that may be it may be five thousand people it may be five people it may be one person but these capabilities these tools will help you with all of them but mr hicks you said something and i defaulted back to you know i'm about to get to you, you said something so powerful and that's not just take the output as it is my way of saying that is put you in it mm. put mm -hmm. you put you in that message and to that end talk about a uh, little bit about how you do that uh is it like if you're writing a blog or if you're writing a script or if you're whatever are you feeding some of your ideas in and then getting some options back or are you just saying give me some ideas and then you tweak those ideas which way do you go with that so I worked for Apple for 10 years, right? So I, I, I'm part of the cult of Mac. I came up with Steve Jobs. I had one of those infamous one-on-ones with Steve Jobs back in Cupertino. And Mr. Jobs was the master at presentations. Whenever he gave a keynote, whenever he gave a, converse, a, a session, there were very little words on the screen, a lot of imagery, a lot of visualization, a lot of pictures, and then he would tell the story. So I, I say all that because that's how I also now utilize technology today for when I'm giving a presentation, doing a conversation, whatever the case. I just have bullet points written down over here of the, the, the five categories and then some other things that I wanted to say. And everything else is very personal, off the cuff, ad lib, off the dome. Because that brings about me. That brings about the personality, right? That, that, that brings about me coming off of the top figuring out what in the world I want to say and then engaging with the comment, the comments and the conversation and the people that are in the community. If I just sat here and read a script, 
and looked at this and said, categories, creation, Adobe Express, super created. That is dull. No one's going no to stay here and listen to that. I, I, I would much rather inflect. I would much rather have kind of that, that tonage within the voice and things of that nature and, and, and be present in conversation. So as I feed information into an algorithm, into a system, I'll get the output and only grab those bullet points, only grab, grab those high level, those 35,000 foot types of conversation pieces that I mentioned before, and then build around that. Because this conversation is going multiple different locations than we probably thought it was when we when we planned it out. Mm -hmm. So if I, again, was just sitting here reading off of, a, off of a script, it would be fine for me, but it wouldn't resonate with the community. Right. And, and, and I, I'll, I'll just share with, with the community as I've done this live stream and, and gotten more skilled at it. Uh, that was one of the lessons I learned. You can have a direction, but when you're having a conversation, there's so much more that comes out of it if you're willing to invest a little bit. Come prepared, yeah. but invest a little bit. Uh, and then... <laughs> Enda says, chat GPT give kind of cheesy marketing, clickbaity titles, and social media posts. <laughs> He's using the free version. <laughs> but you, but you, that's, that's true, though, right? You think but about it, it is you, true. You it see, is true. Because you can see through that. You, mm -hmm. you can see that that it's it's not 100% baked. It, it just it doesn't feel right. It's that first impression. Ah, that, that, that doesn't seem like something that I you would, you would say so. Take take the bits and pieces that make sense, and then build on on top of that that foundation, on top of that framework. That's mm -hmm. how folks, again, kind of as I started, should be respectful of this technology. Don't run from it. Learn how to leverage it. Yeah, you know, you touched on when you were talking about that. Some people being concerned about uh, whether it would, and I'm saying air quotes, replace them. But mm -hmm. it, they, it really truly, and, and I think leaders need to think about this within their own organizations. Uh, some of the work that currently people are doing, these large language models and generative AI will be doing. So mm -hmm. what do you do to reskill your team, your workforce, to still get the best out of them where our brains, our brains are for being creative anyway? to get the most, best out of them. What, I, I know this is not strictly AI tools and workflows, but I think it's an important piece of conversation that has to be had because yeah. it's happening. Literally, it's happening right now. You know, that Definitely, shift. Yeah, and, and, I, and I mentor and I talk to younger, younger folks coming into the industry and say, again, don't be content with what you know today because in a month it'll be old. So continue to, to reach out and, and do those Skillshare um, courses, continue to do those Google certifications, right? Continue to, to make yourself strategic and not tacto, tactical, right? So if, if you're worried about AI probably taking your role and, and having you out and out in the cold, it's possible it, it probably will. A, a, a lot of occupations and, and a lot of roles probably will be somehow subverted by some artificial intelligent algorithm some some tool unless however you learn how to leverage that tool unless you learn how to be active in engaging of what's coming next not trying to tell you to time the market or or, or no you know buy, buy this real estate before it becomes available you know, not, not talking about timing stock markets or anything of that nature but but Every, you're aware of what's going on within your particular industry, so stay current, stay aware, stay knowledgeable of what's coming, what's and what's uh, and what's happening right now within your particular industry. If you're in, in information technology, you know that artificial intelligence, you know that cloud computing, you know that disaster recovery, you know that cyber, you know that these topics are are happening within your particular industry. And I mention those just because that's what I deal with every single day. Educate yourself, take the onus, and take the opportunity and the initiative to get out there and learn what's going on around you. We only, we only see a certain amount of what we are involved in if we just look at our laptops, look at our computers, because literally since COVID, 
right? Since the world stopped, a lot of the world has actually kind of closed in on themselves and, and has not taken that opportunity to reach back out and, and to be very creative and, and to learn and to be engaged. Let's get out of that. Let, let's let's be proactive in terms of leveling up, being 10% better than we are this month. Next month, let's be 10% better, either in knowledge, understanding, uh, capability, whatever, whatever it is. So be proactive, make yourself strategic instead of tactical. And that, that way, if something does come along that maybe re replaces your current role, your current occupation, or, or what it is that you do today, you've got the skills to continue to progress down the road. Yeah. So what other what other uh, areas do you want to cover? You have on your 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 tickler list right there. What I got? Uh, Let me see. That you because you said you had a list, so I don't want to. Um... I think we talked about most of them. Yeah, uh, okay. creation, distribution, analytics, automation. And then the note-taking piece kind of kind of went went through all those, and that, and that really covers the gamut, right? In terms of mm -hmm. the the mindset of the content creator journey, you know, how how are you going to do it? What are you going to do? Where is it going to go when it's done? Um, and then just being efficient in terms of c collecting that information. To be honest with you, th th those are the things. And please, yeah, let's again. I, I gave ten to fifteen specific URLs and tools, but Put me, put, let's, hold on, I'll tell you what, do, let's do this. Put me on full screen again. There you go. Tell you what your boy got right here. So I'm, I'm gonna give him some game here. Futuretools.io, go-to place for me. That right there is where I go on a weekly basis to find out what's coming out brand spanking new in the AI world. Okay. As you see, awesome. as you see, there are multiple categories in terms of what you can put in for. So, say you're looking for something to do video editing. Top tools that are that are in the marketplace as of now to do that particular task. Okay. No, there's there's no way in the world that I'm gonna go out here and try to learn these 50 tools just for video editing. But I am going to find the ones that are resonating, the ones that have probably the most uptick are probably interesting to me from, from a skill perspective and learn those again, being the subject matter expert, being a trusted advisor, being a coach, it's my duty to stay aware of these particular tools and these particular aspects. So, so future tools that IO and I'm giving y'all a game. I, 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 again, I should be charging for this. Man, God. <laughs> man I, what's, that's okay. You you, I'm a, you I'm a, like I'm a, this, I'm you like this community. You like this community. I'm gonna make that T-shirt for no. I'm, I'm gonna make that T-shirt for Gretchen though. From Gretchen. I, I'm gonna make that. Let's, let, what, what did Gretchen call it? What did she call it? Let me find it. I, I'm gonna. No, I wrote, find I wrote it down. You, you wrote it down. Okay. Framework foundation. Found, Jump frame, off. Yeah, yeah that's what she did. I'm gonna hop, put it right there over you real quick. But that's what she framework foundation. And then she told you it should be a t a T-shirt. You know, I tell me two times. <laughs> I told, give me give me four hours. Just give me four hours to come up and with. And then cool Enda just bookmarked that uh, that uh, that nice. thing. And then he's got to say he's it's freeloading. <laughs> freeloading. That's but, all right. Uh, That's I'm all gonna right. I'm gonna encourage our our community. They're gonna be ready. But I love to hear from you all your productivity win of the week, and it. Whatever it is, there's nothing. And I did it again. See, y'all, live happens. Florence, this, you know what this was? This was Florence not being not with my bloopers just before, mm. the, before the show. And I didn't go back and change all of these. Uh, but the, your productivity win of the week. What is one thing that you did in your world to improve, elevate, Fix a piece of friction that you've been facing in your systems just this week. It could have been small. It could have been big. It could have been medium. But think about something that you did. We want to put those up and share and celebrate with you. To celebrate with you, not just always talk negative to ourselves, but recognize when we're doing great things. So, Mr. Chick, someone put you on the spot and say, what was your oh, win Lord. of the week? Man, okay. Let me make sure nobody home because they don't need to know how much I spent. Oh, um, you went crazy on Prime Day. Yeah, 
Well, what is be full pro no, okay. So what I did I did mm. All right, ain't nobody here. I, I did so I picked up another field monitor. So I, I have a, another monitor here that I look at that I have notes and I have the Ecamm Live program running. So so I don't have to stretch over here all the all the time to see what's going on every time tonight I'm streaming. So I've I've got one, two, three, four monitors now. So I've consolidated that in four monitors, gotten rid of, of, of a ton of lights. I've got one very, got, got some dope new lights in here too as well. But hey, hey, Steve Worthy, you still there? Is that, is that ZV1 right there, boy? Full frame. God. So what What I did. <laughs> you let, went let crazy. Take, what, so what, what, what it happened was, and, and again, <laughs> It's 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 leveling up again, ten percent better. I, I I already I know that the not being humble, I, but I know that the image is dope already, right? Because I, I know my camera, I, I know how to mm -hmm. do the, the ISO, I know how to do white balance, so I know how to do all that. But again, time to level up to get again that ten percent better. So going from APS-C to full frame. And, and bringing in that functionality. So my win of the week is is getting this infrastructure in place so I can be that much better in terms of delivering messages and hosting conversations for my community. And I didn't have to tell y'all how much it costs, but because again, I don't, I'm scared we're not my gonna wife ask might that. walk in. We're not, not going to ask that. We're, mm, yeah. mm -mm, we're not going to talk about that. Do so, it. Uh, <laughs> so Enda did put something put something in and so but it's, it's you could when he gets there it's going to be a win and that is uh, uh the day when ai can edit his videos completely will be a happy day pretty close man pretty close Listen, it's pretty, pretty close. close pretty close yeah pretty close yeah. that'll be that'll be good that that'll be a, a a fun time for you so those who are in the building with us in the in the comments leave a comment and let us celebrate with you if you don't have and if anyone who has a last minute question uh put it put it in put a q colon in front of it mr justin robinson welcome to the stream um haven't met you sir but so glad to have you here you said it did a little crash course on youtube content creation and got some actionable ways to improve thumbnails titles boom. and content boom right there huh? that's strong that's dope that's that, dope that right is there. strong that yeah. is strong he said he did a little crash course I, I I I would love to hear a little bit more about that. I bet that's I, I, cool. I would like to hear like what? Uh, yeah, what, you know, what do you just, mean just a leaving us hanging course? there. Just didn't look right. Just, just, just drop course. it and walk <laughs> off. What is that about? What in the heck? What are you doing? You just dropped Tell it me. and walked off. Uh, so if anyone has a question, please put your question in, and we'll we'll get Mr. Hicks to answer it because we're gonna let him get out of here because we've been chapping for almost an hour oh, and a half. This is all good. I, I, I'm just gonna be setting up this new camera. This new camera the, you the, got. The, the lens, listen, the lens showed up right before we went live. So I got every. Oh, wow. What, what lens did you get? So I went with the Viltrox uh, 16 millimeter 1.8. I, I, like, I like it to be very wide from, from an aperture perspective. So I, I can mm -hmm. be very, a lot of blur in the back. I, mm -hmm. I like to have that look going, going cinematic. But yeah, mm -hmm. the uh, ZV1 back to full frame. And, and and sixteen. Had you had you moved off of that? I I when had you, the I had the A seven four. Okay. And the eight this this only A seven four full frame as well. But my issue with that was I got it very early, and it was before they had fixed some of the, the uh, overheating issues. Oh okay. I was so thinking. Not, and, and, well, and the focus breathing, right? It, okay. it didn't have the, the the focus breathing conversation in, in, in that camera, so. I, t I send it back. Uh, I, I can't have my, my camera breathing on me and I can't have it overheating within the studio. So went with the FX30, which is dope camera. Lord, mm -hmm. I mean, it's got, it's got the but fan built in and everything. But wasn't that supposed to be more of a vlog, vlogging camera? Or am I confusing it yeah, with a different well, model? Well, the, the, the ZV-1 is definitely from a content creation perspective because of, because of the size, right? And, and just mm -hmm. some of the capability, the AI capabilities that is built in, into this camera as, as well. You can control it from your, your mobile to phone as, as well. It, you can control this entire phone from your, I mean, this entire camera from your from your iPhone. So, so I love that piece. But my, my plan is, again, 
is utilizing for business. The ZV-1 full frame is going to be mounted in the teleprompter, uh, static, not going anywhere. When we go, when I go out to events, when I go to conferences like Steve Worthy is, I'm taking the FX-30, putting that camera onto my uh, my gimbal and my stabilizer and being very mobile with that. So mm-hmm. I've, I've got purpose and rationale and reasoning behind this, but again, it, it was just me being able to level up and step up 10% more to show up for the community. Awesome. That's how that's how that's how I'm justifying that's, it. Y'all. That's how you justifying it. Listen, don't 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 get me in trouble. I'm not getting you yeah. in trouble. I'm not saying. Mm-mm. Okay, that's how I'm just. I'm a, I'm a, that's my story, and I'm gonna leave it at that. This is a case of hashtag <laughs> mutination. <laughs> so that's no one else good. is putting anything in. I, sir, I have totally totally enjoyed and you know i love for my guests to leave us with a word of wisdom so i'm going to give you the Mm. um the floor so to speak i'm stepping off the stage for you to leave this community the equipping you community and we're going to know more about that this month of artificial intelligence conversations around productivity leave us with whatever it is that's on your heart that you know you know we can use and you want to share. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, before I get into that, I, I saw the win of the week, productivity win of the week coming in from Gretchen. She says uh, she oh, designed and submitted ad for our local Art Alliance Art Walk. Ooh. That was a check mark. And then for herself, she moved 2,500 photos from a ray drive. That's, that's pretty darn good I'm right sorry, there. I'm sorry. I didn't see that, Gretchen. Thank you for sharing that. That is awesome. And thank you yeah, for uh, calling a- that out. That's pretty cool. That's pretty. Listen, my my thing is, I I, I guess I'm going to leave you guys with this. First and foremost, thank you, Flo, for this opportunity. Thank you for having the platform to allow us to have these types of conversations, to be engaged, to be informational, to be fun, to be all the things and then provide some value to to folks that are looking for some information. At the end of the day, that's really what we are doing as content creators and, and as business owners and not doing this for ourselves. We're doing this to bring positive value as shepherds of a community to the community. So uh, end all right, right there. I, I would say back to the conversation and the topic and the title for today, productivity tools and tips and, and how to be more effective in terms of your workflow. Don't be hesitant to look at what, what's out there in the marketplace. Don't be hesitant to do something different than you've done for a number of months, a number of years in the past, because these technology streets are changing rapidly and it's going to behoove you to know what's going on. It's going to behoove you to be in the in the know of how generative AI can help improve your efficiency improve your productivity, limit your, streamline your workflow and limit the the time that you do the thing. So there's always a price versus a cost conversation. You can, you can spend a lot of money and, and get a whole bunch of tools in your toolkit and not know how to use any of them, or you can spend the, right, the money on the right tools, or you can spend the, the resource and the mind and the learning on the right tools, two or three or four or five of them, and really become proficient in those. Use those and then go tell somebody else how to do it as well. Don't just hoard that information. Be willing to share whatever information that that you acquire with the folks that are around you because other folks want to learn as well. We all have a hunger for learning. We all have a hunger for uh, information. And again, if you've got that 10% more than someone else has, do not be afraid to go out there and talk to someone else and and share and bless them with that information as well so they can come up and be be just as great. So again, thanks for this opportunity. I appreciate you. Well, thank you so much for being here and I appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and close this thing out. So as I do every week, I'm going to tell you guys good night and we will, I did it wrong. We will see you next week and there'll be a video link right here for you. 